Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. A couple hours ago, Ubiquity released as official the Unify OS for Dream Machines 1.11.0. This should apply, or this does apply, to both the UDM and UDM Pro. The 1.11 release has been in beta for a long time, so I have no hesitation putting it out of my box. I actually did it as soon as I found out about this uh, because of the, the long beta cycle that it's been in, and I've been tracking that. So and, and the issues of the issues that I've seen at the later stages of that beta have been minor enough that I have no concerns. There are a lot of improvements and there are a lot of bug fixes. I'm not going to dig into the bug fixes. I did just want to point out a couple things in the improvements. One is this improvement to WAN failover stability. Now I don't use WAN failover, but this has been a pretty major problem with the UDM Pro for a long, long time. So hopefully this fixes that. Another long-standing issue is this uh, PPOE throughput issue with both the UDM and UDM Pro. Hopefully this again is um, good news for those users. Now I, I don't use PPOE so it's not something that I can test. Hopefully this fixes that but improve doesn't always mean fix. Another thing that's interesting here is that they upgraded OPN, OpenVPN. So if you are an OpenVPN user with UDM, Pro, UDM or UDM Pro, that is a good thing. But again, the, the big takeaway here is that it's been in beta for a long time. And it, as far as I know, it is just as stable or more stable than the last major release, which is the 1.10.4. In Ubiquity's way, which is annoying, they bury some of the changes in the release notes for other applications. So the big one here is this Unify Network 6.5.54. This update actually fixes a, a serious vulnerability with log4j. Of course, they don't say that it's log4j. If you're not already running 6.5.54, you should install that because that's not all. It's not. Uh, it's a, it's a serious enough vulnerability that you should take it seriously. This is not the most recent version of Unified Network though. 6.5.55 is. And here they actually call out log4j. Now this is not as serious of an upgrade. Uh, the, the main work is done is 6.5.54, but there's absolutely no reason not to install 6.5.55. The key work though in the 6.5 branch they, didn't act, they don't actually call it out here, which I, in some ways makes sense, but in other ways is really annoying because there was no official release until 6.5.54, if I'm remembering correctly. And the 6.5 branch introduced a really neat feature, this add traffic rules, which required the UDM 1.11 or newer firmware. So I've been waiting to test this out. And, uh, you know, there's other, other things here, too. But this is the, the one thing that I've been super interested in, in having a play with. Let's go look at the UDM, or my UDM Pro, because there, there's other changes, too, with the firmware. The main one is that this screen, this loading screen, the first screen that you get to, is very, very different. They've moved the applications to the left navigation, and then they just give you a topology chart in the center, which is pretty cool. I really, I think that that's pretty neat. I also like that they've included cameras in the topology. It's not just uh, Unify networking devices right now or anymore. The settings for the UDM and UDM Pro haven't really changed anything, so I'm going to skip that. But if you click on, say, this um, main port here, it'll take you to the devices. And that topology, the new topology paradigm, is also here on the Unified Devices page, so you can see your cameras alongside your networking devices, which is awesome. But the thing I really, really wanted to see is when I go into the traffic and security, is that the traffic rules or the network rules. What this allows you to do, and they've changed the user interface here a little bit because they used to be promising that you could create scheduled rules which obviously the rule here doesn't support. And it's somewhat disappointing because that was the thing that was really interesting because then what it does is it makes it possible to use the UDM as uh, a parental control device. Let's just quickly walk through a rule and then we'll talk a little bit about 
the rule that I already have in place. So you, you just name it however you want, like my pretend rule. I'm going to block something. And there are several options here. You can network, local network, internet, IP address. Basically what this should do is create firewall rules and provide the ability to create firewall rules in a really easy way. But let's say that I want to do a specific app. So I can select all these apps, Zoom, Twitter, Instagram, WeChat, Netflix, whatever. But let's just select YouTube. So YouTube's here and I select a device. Now I'm just going to block it so you can go all devices, different lands. I am going to search for the computer that I'm on and I'm going to add the rule. Now note, this is a block rule. I already have a rule set up here for my phone because I thought it would be interesting to see if it worked. And uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't. <laughs> It doesn't work. And it's so frustrating because I so wanted this to work because it's such a neat concept and it would allow me to stop using, I have a circle. It would allow me to stop using the circle, which is this horribly antiquated uh, parental control network ma management tool that uses um, ARP spoofing. I did a review of it a long time ago to, to take that out of my network. So hopefully this is something that ubiquity fixes because now it's something I can complain about legitimately because it's not just a beta feature it's a feature that's supposed to be supported but that would be awesome especially if you could schedule it to say like so my son can't use YouTube after 9 p.m. I'm really looking forward to playing with this a little bit more I'm, I'm really hoping that ubiquity fixes the their new traffic rule feature and uh, I hope you found it useful if you did, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.